Amen. God bless your hearts. Um, as much as during the service, we would like everyone to have something to say. Um, Jim knew too many people. And we could be here all day. And so the order of the of service in the obituary only has a few people that are designated to give remarks. And therefore, we have about 35 minutes. And if there's anyone that wants to come at this time and make remarks, we ask that you would come at this time. I'm sure the family would be happy to hear. We thank you for your support. We thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you, Trinity. Thank you for all the members, and we thank you. And so if there's anyone here that desires to have any remarks, um, I have um, met people this week who said they'd known Jim and said that they worked for him, said that, they fought, that he fired them, they quit, then they rehired, they got back. That's what they were saying. And so everybody has good stories, amen. Nothing bad, but good stories. And so why don't you come if you desire? I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Well, no, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. Cause I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. Well, yes, I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. So back back train, back back train and get your load. Back back train, back train and get your load. Back back train, back 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 train, back back train and get your load. I got my ticket, got my ticket in my hand. I got my ticket, it in my hand. Got my ticket. Oh yes, got my ticket. I got my ticket in my hand. So get right church, get right church, and let's go home. Get right church. Get right church. Get right, get right church. Get right church and let's go home. Cause I'm not worried, I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried, I'm not worried about my soul. 
I'm not worried. Oh no, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. I got my ticket. I got my ticket. I got my ticket. Oh yes, got my ticket. I got my ticket in my hand. So back my train, train and get your load. Back my train, back my train, back 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 back. your load, cause I'm going home, I'm going home on the morning train, I'm going home, I'm going home, oh yes, I'm going home, I'm going home on the morning train, cause the evening train, evening train may be too late, the evening train, The evening train may be too late. The evening train may be too late. And I'm not worried, I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried, worried about my soul. I'm not worried. Oh no, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. Well, I have known Jim Rose all of his life. <laughs> and of course, I've always known him as Seeky. And he has always been a very pleasant person to me, a very respectable person to me. Um, always with that um, big smile, as everyone knows. Um, I feel a little bad because I, I owed him a meal that I never got to him. Um, I used to, f I, sometimes I would see his crew working, doing the blacktop, and one of his workers I, I um, brought food to, for, brought him some lunch. And so when I brought the employees some lunch, you know, Siki was up in the truck and he was like, <laughs> so by the time I got home, I got a text message saying, what does a brother have to do to get a meal? And so I told him, I said, okay, the next time I see y'all working, I will make sure that you get a meal. 
And of course that never happened, but I'm sure he forgives me for that. But again, um, he's always been a very respectable person, a good person, and it was an honor and a privilege to know him. And to the family, you have my deepest sympathy. If there's anything that I could ever do, um, feel free to let me know. Gotta be somebody else. Don't let me come down there and start pulling y'all out the pew. <laughs> Someone, why don't you take this opportunity to come? You know he down there, he up there looking at y'all. He, he up there looking at y'all waiting. <laughs> He waiting. He had this all planned, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> what you say I get 20 minutes? You got 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good afternoon, good morning. However, whatever time you want to say it is. You know, I got the honor, well, you know, let me back up. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And first and foremost, uh, my heart goes out to the Rose family who I've known most of my life. Wow. Um, if I can remember, me and James sat right there. And our fathers would pass back and forth straight pins. He was from falling asleep. But I'm trying to keep my composure here because... You know, when a brother, I won't say leaves here, but because their spirit is still here, but the opportunity to see them, you miss. But the thing about it, James, we, he didn't um, belong to any of us. He belonged to God and God called him. So there, there's no doctor, there's no family member, there's nobody could have um, kept him when God made that call. But what we should be doing right now is thanking God that we had the opportunity to even get to know him. Because uh, God put people here for certain reasons. He's fulfilled his need. He took care of his family. He took care of his friends. He left with us a magic, I'll say, that, man, I would like to be like that. I'd like to take care of my family like that. I would like to leave uh, this energy that God put in me so it can flow to somebody else. And that's what he did. There's no animosity that we should have because of um, him not being here. It's not our choice. It's not our call. It is God's call. But one thing we better hope is he calls us the same way. And we have a big family like this. At times, family might be dysfunctional. So what? But the love that we put out is the love that we're supposed to get back. And that's what he did. And that's what he's getting right now. I thank God for each and every one of you here and everybody that in their mind, they think they have something to say that is negative about him. You should look in the mirror first because we win just like him. God bless each and every one of you. I met James many years ago, many, many years ago, and um, 
we chose James and, and Kim to be um, our daughter's godparents when she was born. And, you know, they, they were there for us when needed. You know, James used to, you know, call her a little bad, her little bad self, you know, her little sassy self. But, you know, he was made for that. And, you know, and we always knew that if there was anything that ever was needed, whether it be spiritual, financial, emotional, or whatnot, James was there, you know, and, and he was one of the perfect God fathers to have for our children. Over the years, you know, you lose contact with somebody just because, you know, life goes on. And the first time James was in the hospital at Mount St. Mary's, you know, Kim called down to me and I took myself up there and I said, what are you doing here? I was like, you got to take better care of yourself because the world needs you in it. You know, and that was, that was probably 10, 15 years ago. And, and he, you know, he stayed and, and it was, the world needed James and James's laugh. And a few years back, I needed to have my driveway done. And there was only one person I thought of. And when Kim James and uh, uh, Tamira came out to my house and, you know, they were looking at it and whatnot. You know, I got to see that, you know, I was like, oh, James, you're looking a little sicker. I was like, but you know what? He was still out there. He was still doing what he loved with the people that he loved, you know, and um, he was a fair man. He was, he was a, a good one. Um, Leah has asked to hear his laugh, so we're going to play her a video of that so that she can have that, that memory of him and, and her, you know, her thoughts as well. And, you know, Kim, girls, I'm so sorry that you, you've lost your father. Miss Rose, I'm sorry that your, your son has gone before you. I was like, it's never a good thing when our children leave us before we can leave them. And um, you have my heartful condolences on this. And there's nothing I can say that can make it easier, but rest assured that he was well loved. He was well appreciated by people. And that's the one memory that you can take with and, and know that you know he was a good man and he will be missed. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Uh, man, uh, James, I know him for Seagy, man. That was my cousin, man. Uh, back in the day, my grandfather, Willie Rose, y'all know him from Ham. Man, every weekend I had to come out there. The first house we go to was Uncle Dennis' house. They was like teenagers then, maybe 16, 17. At the time, I was five, six years old. Man, that voice, his voice used to just have me. He always had me hyped when I was a little boy coming over there, man. I watched Seeky work the trucks from my Uncle Dennis. I watched all that, man. I love y'all all all the time. 38th Street, man. I always was there. Every weekend, me and Pancho. (laughs) You know, uh, man, I'm going to miss Seeky. It don't matter what I was going through in my life, my trials and tribulations, man. Cousin always, always showed me respect and love. Every time I seen him, even in Buffalo, because... 
back years ago, he used to always be in Buffalo, Ryan. You want a job, cuz? Cuz, you know I ain't doing that. <laughs> That's what I used to tell Come on, cuz, you know I ain't doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, man, good dude all my life, man. All my life, man. I was coming to the Falls all my life. Every time I get there, the only person they ask for is my Uncle Gino. What Gino at? <laughs> Seeky, what you? I don't know, man. But, man, I love y'all, man.
then is mine, is mine, oh mine. I got a new home over in Zion, and it's mine, it's mine, oh mine. I got a new home over in Zion, and it's mine, it's mine. a new home over in Zion and it's mine it's mine oh mine I got a new walk over in Zion and it's mine it's mine oh mine I got a new walk over in Zion Say 
God be with you till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. Tell we me. God be with you. Tell we me. Again. thy good and faithful servant we thank God for this life today we thank God for this family we thank God amen that brother Jim was a integral part of the Trinity Baptist Church amen and we thank God for the family we will have an Old Testament, New Testament reading by Pastor Caldwell, a prayer of comfort by Pastor Searcy, and then we'll ask the choir to come with the musical selection at that time. Amen. The Old Testament scripture the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name say yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Your New Testament scripture, John, the 14th chapter, first through the sixth verse. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know it. And the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. May the Lord add a blessings to the hearing of his holy word and give us strength for our soul.
in times like these. You need a savior in times like these. You need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. that you grip the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Eternal God, uh, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life and the works of Brother Rose. Lord, we thank you that you allowed him to pass by our lives the lives that he has touched, and we ask a special blessing upon uh, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and sisters. But you said in your word in the book of Hebrews, it's appointed us the man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. We used to sing that song, my Lord is getting us ready for that great day. I am so glad that Brother Rose got himself together. All the things that he used to do, he didn't do no more. The places he used to go, he didn't go nowhere. But Lord, we thank you that he looked to the hills for which cometh his help, knowing that all his help, all his strength came from you and you alone. Lord, while the blood is yet running warm in our veins today, prick our hearts and we must say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I know in times like these, when things don't look so well and things don't look so great, we know that we have a Savior that made provisions for us. For when it's your time to call, and I was the answer, we want to hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. When we went into room to come out no more, stuck our sword in the sand of time. We just want to hear you say, well done. We'd ask a special blessing that you would go with them, guide them, lead them, and direct them. And when times get hard, they might say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And when their ways seem to be dark, we want them to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And Lord, every now and then, we need us a hiding place that we might say, rock of ages. Clap for me, let me hide myself in thee. But Lord, you said you would stick closer than a brother. These and other blessings we ask in thy darling son Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Uh, I'm quite sure we ain't all been saved all our lives, right? There's a blues song say that I done had my fun if I don't get well no more. And when I thought about Zeke, Zeke come by my house, I fired a turkey for him one day, and uh, he didn't get out the car. I brought the turkey to him, and he slipped me $50, and I said, what's this for? He said, just take the $50. A few days later, he called me, he said, I want that money back. I, I'm like, what, 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 why you want your money back? He said, that thing was a little hard. He said, next time. He, he, he told me, next time, he wanted the turkey cooked perfect. So he called me another time. He said, well, next time you put some ribs on the grill, call me. Put the ribs on the grill. This time, Zeke didn't get out that truck too much. Man, you should have seen that big, well, you should have seen him getting out that truck to get to them ribs. And then I have never seen nobody take, after you eat the rib, he take a knife and scrape that look. Now, if you throw it to a, a dog, a dog ain't go, he didn't leave nothing for the dog. And then he say, he say, and, uh, and then I say, what, you gonna take some for your wife? He said, and you better not tell nobody. I said, Lord, I can tell it now. 
Uh, but he said, you, you better not, if we go to Judy's Lounge, we hang out. I ain't going to, no, no, I, I sure ain't going to tell it all, because uh, y'all be blessed. And Zeke, I'll see you on the other side. You're right, don't tell it all. That's right. <laughs> Amen. And, and Reverend Cersei's in order. He did ask me to say something, and so we thank him for the remarks. There's one thing I just discovered, that Jim knew how to get food out of everybody. He told me one day that he hadn't had chicken and dumplings. And all I want is some chicken and dumplings. And I said, really? I said, what kind? He told me what kind. And so I went home and I said, well, that's one of my things. I'm going to make him some chicken and dumplings. I made him a whole big pot of chicken and dumplings. And I asked him, did y'all get some? And he, they said, nope. He said he ate that all by himself. <laughs> amen. And so, amen. He was eating, he was eating good. <laughs> he was eating good. He loved life. He loved to live. He loved, he loved to eat. Yes, sir. Amen. And we are grateful unto God. We were even in the hospital trying to get him steak sandwiches. We were trying. Did he get them? <laughs> he got, we were trying it. You brought him. Amen. So we, we are going to miss him. The choir is going to come with uh, our selection, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand, and then the obituary knowledge of the church benediction and church resolution by uh, Sister Ashley Green. The choir will come back with their selection. There's a leak in this old building. Amen. Trust, 
trust in him, he will not leave you. Oh, what, whatsoever years may bring, if my earthly friends forsake God, still more closely to him cling. Everybody ought to hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging hand. You ought to hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging hand. Build your home, build your home, some things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand, you ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand, build your hope, build your hope on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. So I've been best friends with Candace probably for the last oh, 27 plus years. So I had the honor and privilege to be a part of Kim and James and their house growing up. Um, so it is my honor today to share his life and legacy with all of you. James F. Rose, 58, born June 24th, 1964. Departed this earth on January 16th, 2023. He was born to Aura Lee Rose and the late Dennis Rose Sr. James, better known as Siki, attended Trot Vocational School. He worked alongside his dad at Rose Trucking before taking over in 1994. He changed the name to Jim's Trucking and Paving which he ran up until his passing. James was a longtime member of Trinity Baptist Church, where he was a part of the men's choir. When taking breaks from business and work, James enjoyed bowling, black and white westerns, watching the Buffalo Bills, and spending time with his grandchildren, puppy Rocky and grandpups. James is leaving behind his beloved mother, his wife Kim, three daughters, Candace, Chardet, and Tamira, three grandsons, Michael, Kevin, and Kingston, two godchildren, Danielle and Poncho, two sisters, Anne-Marie Holloman, and Earlene, the late Laverne Bones, and one brother, Timothy Rose, all from Niagara Falls, New York. He also leaves behind a host of family and close friends. James was preceded in death by his beloved father, his siblings, Dennis Jr., Robert Earl, and Geraldine, his good friends, Blake, and his longtime furry friend, his dog, Petey. <laughs> Siki was well known for his infectious smile and contagious laugh, and would want everyone to keep that memory in mind when thinking of him. Read, just read a couple of cards. With sympathy and loss of your husband, no time on earth is long enough to share with those we love. Nothing can prepare our hearts to say goodbye. May the sympathy of those who care about you and the precious memory of your husband plus dad help to comfort you at this time. Sincerely, Linda and Harold Clark. A journey remembered, as some people journey through life, they leave footprints wherever they go. Footprints of kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. 
Even when they are gone, we can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind, a trail bright with hope that invites us to follow. Praying you'll be comforted with precious memories and God's presence to care for you and your loss. With sympathy, love, Cynthia Crockett. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness for, be for my comfort. Praying that our Lord who loves you so dearly will speak blessings and comfort to your heart in the coming days. With deepest sympathy, Shirley Matthews and family. There are no words, but there are heartfelt wishes and healing thoughts and all are being sent your way to help comfort you during this difficult time. With sympathy, our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Lisa, Diane, and Andy, High Park School. There are no words. James was always smiling and always laughing. We'll remember him as such a kind and funny person. May your memories help you at this time. You are all in our prayers with sincere condolences to you and your family, Trent and Trina Hamilton. And now I will read the official church resolution of respect for Brother James F. Rose. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go to all extremes, so if, you, if your cross seems hard to bear, and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will see you through. We are in, a pl in place in this world for a limited time, and with the infant's breath begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Now death has come to one of our beloved members, James Fitzgerald Rose, on January 16, 2023. Our dear brother in Christ was called home to be with the Lord, whereas, in the providence of God, he has ended the life of James F. Rose, Pastor Jimmy Hardaway Jr., Reverend Karen Anderson Hardaway, and the officers and members of Trinity Baptist Church of Niagara Falls, New York, feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family during the passing of James F. Rose. We commend you to him. Who knows best and will always do right? You have our sincere prayers. Whereas, during the many years that Brother Rose was at Trinity, he was a very devoted and faithful member. Brother Rose served faithfully on the trustee ministry, male chorus, and men's ministry. He gladly contributed his time, talent, and finances to the uplifting of the church. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. Life is just a stepping stone, a pause before we make it home, a simple place to rest and be until we reach eternity. Everyone has a life journey, a path to take with lots to see. God guides our steps along the way, but we were never meant to stay. Our final destination is a place filled with love, his majesty and grace today. We celebrate the life of a loved one who has gone before us the race he has won. His journey has now ended. His spirit has ascended, claiming the great reward with Jesus our Lord. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. To the family, we know your loss is profound and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your grief. More importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on this 24th day of January 2023, the officers and members of the Trinity Baptist Church, Niagara Falls, New York, Reverend Dr. Jimmy Hardaway, Jr., Pastor. You know I love y'all. <laughs> Thank you.
Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building, yeah, Lord. You're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want to say, Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want you to fix it, fix it like you said you would. Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building, yeah, Lord. You're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want to say, Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want you to fix it, fix it like you said you would. Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building, yeah, Lord. You're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want to say, Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want you to fix it, fix it like you said. the price and I'm not not my own since you came into my life my troubles are not yours so I'll keep walking by faith for I know you'll make a way you're my landlord Jesus and I trust you every day yes I do I want to say, Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building, yeah, Lord. You're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want to say, Lord, you're the landlord, and there's a leak in your building. I want you to fix it, fix it like said you would somebody say feel like they can't get well somebody say Jesus feel like they can't get well somebody say Lord feel like they can't get well I want you like you said you would Lord you're the landlord and there's a leak in your building yeah Lord you're the landlord and there's a leak in your building I want to say Lord you're the landlord and there's a leak in your building I want you Cause I can't fix it. 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 You're my landlord. Jesus, you're my landlord. You're my landlord. Jesus, you're my I want you to fix it. You told me you You promised. You said that you I can't fix it. Jesus, I can't fix it. I can't fix it. Lord, you're my landlord. Jesus, 
somebody that there's a leak in this building. Come on, there's a leak in the building. But aren't you glad that you got another place not made by the hands of man? That was one of Jim's songs, favorite songs. One of his songs, amen. Jim would tell me that um, I like old time church. He said, I like old time, sure. and you would hear him in the back going, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. He would like old time church. Um, he got excited when I would ask him to pray on Sunday morning. Matter of fact, they said that when he got home, that's all he talked about about how he was praying on Sunday morning. He wouldn't know how he was doing, but he believed, and I would call him because I know that he believed in prayer and in the power of prayer. And so um, we are grateful. I'm gonna move along then. I'm gonna give this eulogy after these uh, few loved ones come. I'm not gonna be long because you have to understand that a eulogy is actually lived by the life that you live. I can't add anything to what he's done. Amen. And there's so many people that don't have a eulogy. Some people, they don't, they don't have, they have not lived and touched people's lives. And so Jim lived his life, so I don't have to be long. I know that if I don't holler one time, he gonna get upset about that. <laughs> Because he told me if I don't holler, I don't preach. But, it, <laughs> but that's, that's all right. That was Jim, amen. And so at this time, um, we're going to have expressions by Dr. Robert Bull, Pancho Rose. Now, you can't get on me because I've read what I read here. <laughs> but he said Pancho Rose. Then Jimmy Jones and Chardé will come in that order. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Pastor Hardaway, Kim and daughters, Mrs. Rose, family and friends. When Kim telephoned me the other night and asked if I would be willing to speak this morning, this afternoon, I was petrified. Public speaking paralyzes me. However, it only took a moment to agree, and I'm honored to say a few words about my good friend James. James and I met in 1993. His dad was in ICU at Mount St. Mary's, and I saw him tenderly visit his dad each day while I was tending to my own patients in the unit. As fate would dictate, we both lost our fathers on the same day. It was with shared grief that our friendship was forged. Not long afterwards, James called me and asked if he could become my patient. Thus began a beautiful relationship and the happiest memories of my career. During the next 30 years, we would enjoy many professional and personal encounters. He was always a welcome visitor to my office and loved by my staff as well. With Kim always at his side, we tried to tackle his many health issues. Sadly, many of them were not to be resolved. You see, James and I shared one thing in common, very healthy appetites. Each visit would include diet recommendations and strong urges to quit smoking. He would agree for a moment and then invite me to go out for pizza. 
trips to my family's farm market in Eaton brought corn, peppers, and peaches, which he loved, but just don't try to get him to eat a mushroom. It wasn't going to happen. James was incorrigible, but so easy to love. James paved my parking lots and driveways, and I would often go out to speak with him. The front seat of his truck would be full of chicken wings, pop, and cigarettes. <laughs> he would explain, a working guy has to eat, and then he would let loose a laugh that could be heard in Batavia. In 2019, I had a terrible experience. I entered the deepest, dark, darkest pit of despair and saw no way out. I surrendered to God my life, my fears, and my worries and prayed that his will be done. The only worst experience of my life was the loss of both parents. Totally unexpected, Kim and James came to my rescue. Their kindness to me that evening was a direct response to my prayer and is the reason why I lived through it. For that, I'm eternally grateful. In 2021, I was diagnosed with cancer and faced massive surgery and months of chemo. James' frequent visits, calls, and texts brought me through it. Truly, the patient had become the caregiver. Last summer, I saw James for the last time. I was working in my garden when suddenly a truck appeared in the driveway. I could recognize James' neon smile through the windshield. He said he had trouble hearing out of one of his ears and wondered if I could take a look. Fortunately, I had the apparatus to examine ears at my home. His truck was so tall I could not reach him and it was too painful for him to climb in and out of the truck. So I climbed in alongside him, examined his ear, and removed a large plug of tar. <laughs> I tossed the piece of tar out the truck window. James yelled at me, hey, the cost of asphalt's going up, and I could use that at my next job. He laughed so hard that he could have set off a tornado. After that, he said, let's go for wings. Ever the killjoy, I said, James, we do not need to be eating any wings. How often I've thought about that evening and wished I had gone out with him. It would have been our last happy time. James's last few months were very difficult for him and his family. Frequent hospitalizations and always the fear that tomorrow may not come. Our calls and visits were less frequent, but just as precious. He expressed his strong faith in God and knew that he was under the Savior's care. He and I decided that the first one to enter heaven would save room on the cloud for the other. He said, well, Doc, if I get there first, it'll be easy to find me because my cloud will be blacktopped. <laughs> that was our last shared laugh. Kim shared with me that when James departed last Monday, he had a broad smile, which brought her much comfort. I'm sure he felt the presence of his loved ones around him, and maybe he was getting a glimpse into heaven. Perhaps, too, he saw his dad waiting for him at the gates. He had come to the end of the race, a life well lived. Let's remember that passing with a psalm, number 121. I lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all harm and will look over you now and forevermore. Jim, thanks for being a best friend.
spent a lot of time with me uh, before other people came along. <laughs> but at the beginning, I got to tell you the story. So he said, nephew, I got one. I said, what you talking about? I got one. I like it, too. He said, nephew, I got one. I like it, too. I said, you like somebody besides me? He said, yeah, yeah, I like her. I said, well, what's going on? He said, we're going to meet her today. We go up there. She said, she said, hi, Ponch. She had all these burgers in front of me. You remember? <laughs> he said, talk to her. Tell her I like her. And maybe go further. And I said, uh, I need fries. I need, you can't just give me burgers. I need the whole thing. I need toys and fries. We come back the next week. Now the manager's getting mad because she can pull in her leg, you know, from her doing her job and everything. He bought all the burgers. And he bought the whole thing inside McDonald's and brought it out front and let people eat the food for free so he could get 15 minutes to talk to him. So, this is serious. I was in on the burgers. Every kid that was on Pine Avenue at that time was in on the burgers. They just eating out in the parking lot at this point in time so he could get 15 minutes to talk to her without her manager getting mad. The next time he came around, she quit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I learned at an early age, if you want it, go get it. He also taught me dedication, focus, and take your time with things. And that's what we all going to have to do is take our time with this one. Obviously, he's a big point to me, big point to you. He let us, punished us when he needed to. You know what I mean? So just take your time with this. Uncle Seek was a big thing to us. You know what I mean? Everybody know James, Jim. You don't know Seek. You don't know Seek. You know what I mean? So I appreciate everybody coming out. I love them dearly. Anything y'all need, you know I'm right there. All right? Thank you. First of all, in all my life, I've been seeing his name wrong. I've been seeing Zeke. Well, first of all, I didn't know it was an S. The, the school system failed me. <laughs> then, then the choir scene fixed this old leak in this roof. I think Zeke fixed our leak up in here. <laughs> and that was his request? <laughs> Uh, that was pretty good. But me and Zeke, we was bowling. We, we was bowling. We used to bowl a lot all together. Now, when I joined the Pioneer Mixed League, you know, I was young. Zeke was just a little bit older. So he was top dog bowling. Him and Joey Martin. They was, they was, they was tough. They was tough. So me and my boy, Maurice Walker, we come in the league, and we talking mad junk. Now, Joey Martin's mother, Classy Steele, was a heck of a bowler. She was tough. She was talking, now that's Joey Mama. So me and Reese, after league bowling in the Pioneer Mix, we like, we gonna, we gonna challenge Joey and, and Zeke to a, a, a bowling for money. We gonna bowl 20 yards a game for three games. Now, Zeke didn't know too much about me and Marie. We was up and coming. So we bowled against Zeke and Joey, and we tore him up. Man, we ate him alive. Now, now we, after the bowling done with, we got to put our regular shoes on. So I'm sitting next to Joey. No, I'm sitting next to Zeke, putting my shoes on, and Zeke putting his shoes on. I said, I told you I was going to whoop you, Zeke. He's like, yeah. But I ain't know Joey mommy ain't teach him nothing about bowling. <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> so um, another thing, I worked for the state, and I used to see Zeke all over black topping, all over. And he used to always say, well, you know, when you finish with the state, you can come work for me. <laughs> now, nah, I'm looking. Now, he was on the job site. He's sweating, and he's sitting on the roller, and I'm looking at his staff. One, no background check when he hired him. <laughs> One, no background check. <laughs> and I'm like, you want me to come work for you? I'm like, Ezekiel, do you see me? I'm driving a truck with air conditioning, and I'm just getting out talking to you. <laughs> One, I'm going to leave this foe to come over there. I'm just saying, I, I need a good worker now. It ain't going to be me. <laughs> but I, I love Zeke. He was one of the best, greatest friends I had. And he'd do anything for anybody. I mean anybody, you know. He didn't hold grudges. And he gave everybody a chance and a shot at anything they wanted. You know, I'm going to miss Zeke and everything. Because we had our times about Pastor Hardaway, too. But we're going to take that to the grave. <laughs> All right, everybody. Before Charday comes, I always have the last word. <laughs> Go sit down. Most of y'all here know me, and if you couldn't already tell by my face, that's my dad. <laughs> I'm the middle child of his three girls. When I told my family I was going to speak at the funeral, they didn't believe me. My mom asked what I was going to say, and I told her, you have to wait. The thing was, I had no idea what I was going to say, um, but I knew I had to say something. My dad told me a long time ago, I better speak at his funeral. I better handle it, and we all know whatever he says goes. I first want to say thank you to everyone on behalf of our entire family for everything y'all have done. Two things my dad always told me is God is able, he will make a way. And I'm up here speaking now, <laughs> so that's true. <laughs> Another thing my dad used to say to me all the time was, Boop, people really like your daddy. <laughs> and y'all can look around right now and see he knew what he was talking about. Every day since he passed, I have heard him in my head saying the same thing he would say to me after every lecture he gave me. You got this. You're a rose girl. You're tough, and we're built for this. Absolutely. Remembering these words was got me through every day since I, I've been without him. To my daddy, I love you. You were the best father I could have ever asked for, and I thank you for everything you've done for me, my sisters, and your grandsons. I am your name. I am your face. I am your smile. I am your determination. I am your fight. I am your attitude. I am you. And I have never been more proud to wear all of those titles. You call me your road dog. You know I was down to handle anything you threw at me. <laughs> I always wanted to make you proud, and I hope I continue to do just that while you wash down on me. This isn't goodbye. This is see you later. And I'm already sure you took those measurements up there. <laughs> so when the day comes, I won't be walking up heaven's staircase, but instead walking up a paved road. <sighs> now y'all know my dad thought he was a police officer. <laughs> He used to ride around his truck all day long with a scanner in, <laughs> in his cup holder, <laughs> letting everyone know what's going on in the city. We even found him one time in the middle of a high-speed chase. So in good fashion, I wanted to give him the proper send-off, an end-of-watch call, minus the police scanner. <laughs> um, first, a moment of silence, please.
This is a final call for you, Papa, AKA Big Jim, AKA Zeker 114, an incredible trucker and an even better man, father, and grandpa. End of watch, Monday, January 16th, 2023. Thank you for your service and thank you for everything you've done. Your work on here on earth is finished. You will be dearly missed. May you rest in peace. Job well done. Your baby girl has it from here. Brother Mitchell McLeod will come.
2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. I want to talk a few minutes from this subject, this eulogy, when it's time to go. When it's time to go. To this family, to this um, wife and children, um, I want to also thank God for his mother. Amen. Amen. believe that uh, Sister Rose is, is between two of y'all, you one of the oldest members of this church. And I've never had to experience this, but when I speak to others and I've been doing funerals about 40 some years, is that it's hard for a mother to lose a child. I don't care how old they are. And what we need to realize that no matter how old we get, we still mama's babies. Amen. Amen. And so we're praying for you. Also, we're praying for the entire family. Amen. Thank you to everyone. Amen. Thank you to everyone. Amen. Where Brother Williams to go? Did he step out? He was, I saw him in the back. Okay. So if he stepped out, then that means he can't give me a signal that I got to sit down. Amen. He, oh, I got the, <laughs> he got somebody back here. I am already being poured out. Could y'all do me a favor? Turn off the cell phones. Turn them down. It does not have to ring. It doesn't have to do the dings in respect to the family. Thank you, sir. To so I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. Um, as I said before, James lived his life. He lived it as he wanted to live it. He lived it fully. He did what he did. And let's be honest, he said what he wanted to say. He said it. And then we would move on. He was that kind of person. He loved church. He loved church. He was the only person that I ever saw when we were having services in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Then I was preaching that he would get so happy that he would jump out his truck All right. and begin hollering at me at the door. And I would look, because then I said, I must be doing something out here. But he just, he loved the word of God. All of us have some good things. And all of us have some bad things. I get bothered by people who act like they've never done nothing wrong. All of us have sin. The Bible says, and come short of the glory of God. All of us have made mistakes. Yes, but my question to you is, what is your relationship 
with the Lord. Because I serve a God that is a forgiving God. Because there's a whole lot of people that won't forgive you. Won't have any kind of mercy and say they love the Lord. But what is your relationship? Because if it had not been for God, none of us would be here today. Can I say that again? None of us would be here. It was by the grace of God. Jim knew that. He knew that. He loved the Lord. He, he went about doing his business. And as everybody said, if you, if you traveled over the region somewhere, you would see either his truck, you would see his business, you would see a sign somewhere. I got lost on Grand Island. And I went down one road, and there were Jim trucking. Went over to Buffalo, and Jim was all over the place. Jim brought me a pizza from Imperial Pizza, because he said he was way over there. And he was, as he moved about, he was touching people's lives. He was touching people's lives. He was touching people's lives. He would meet people. He would meet preachers. And, and, and preachers would call me and say, do you know this guy named Jim? And, and they would ask him for it. Or he was involved in his business. And he, he loved his business. Can somebody, when this is over, explain to me how you get tire in your ears? <laughs> He loved the business. He lived the business. He loved his trucks. And Charday, you said that he was the police because Jim would tell you he saw you somewhere when you didn't see him. Because <laughs> he was all over the place. But on Sunday morning, on. when he was well, yes, sir. he was sitting right over there yes, sir. in the church. And he would come in and he would sing and, and um, don't let his sister get up and sing. Because <laughs> he was on his feet before she even said a word. <laughs> but he knew he loved to hear her singing. He loved to hear the choir singing. Jim was that kind of person that when we um, went to, y'all still got that phone on. <laughs> when we went to other churches and services, Jim was going to be there. I could look up and see Jim in, in the back. He would go. And y'all might say whatever y'all want about Jim and me, but Jim supported me. All right, all right. He was there when other people were not there. Come on. He was that just that kind of man. And some of us would wish that we could even measure up to who he was. I watched last night as people came in and the line was long and, and um, people from all statures of life were here at the beginning to come in. Went through the city, people were asking me, when is the service? Because they wanted to be here. And so I think that we should give Jim a big hand for who he was. Pancho, I think someone was here last night and they were looking at him and they said, this is the end of an era. They said, this is the end of an era. But you know what? It might be just the end of this time. But can I tell you his life is going to live on? In somebody, in his children, in, amen, in, in the family. His life will always live on. The parking lot in the back, Jim did it. Didn't ask for a dime gave of his own resources. 
Didn't ask him to do it, but he did it. And didn't even tell me that he did it. It was just there when I got here. He would do those kind of things because of his love for Trinity Baptist Church. But let me tell you something. Jim was preparing us for his departure. It was not a surprise. Jim knew he was about to go. Jim knew that he was on his way. He was preparing us, and, 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 and regardless of how we wanted him to stay and how we prayed and we begged, Jim was looking for a better place where there was no more sorrow and where there was no more pain. Jim was looking for a place. Do you know that, that, that Jim was tired of being sick? Have you ever been sick and tired of something? Yes, sir. Have you ever been? Yeah, y'all know. Y'all, some of y'all are sick and tired of some folks in here today. <laughs> but have you ever been sick and tired? Jim was in and out the hospital. Jim up that down the road to Rochester, going this way and that way and going this way. And, and somewhere down the line, Jim said, enough is enough. Yes, he says, this is what he was basically saying. If I have faith in God, then I have to activate my faith. Come on. And I have to believe that if God says or whatever God's will is, I'm going to accept it. Mm -hmm. About a month or two ago, Jim was saying that um, I don't want all of this stuff no more. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of the doctors and the poking and 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 and. I think what Jim was saying to us is that he was just, he was getting ready. But Jim was fighting a good fight. Y'all hear me? Jim was fighting a good fight. He, he, he hung on, he fought. Jim should have been gone a long time ago. But he was fighting the fight. And I guess that's what y'all say when you say, that's the kind of roles we are. Because we're going to fight a good fight. And, and, and that's where I, I'm reminded of this text. Can I just look at this text very quickly? Because, because it says here, uh, Paul, as he writes to his son Timothy, and, and, and Jim is writing to us, he left a message to us. He says to us that, that I, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. Back then, that, that meant that, that, that I'm, I'm, always, I'm already on my way. I know that it's time. It's, it's time. I'm time. But, 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 but let me get some things in order. Let me, let me help. He wasn't trying to prepare himself. He was trying to prepare y'all. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. He was, yes, sir. he hung around. I remember we, um, November, and you called us and said that we need to go to the hospital. And we, we went to the hospital, and everybody thought that was it. And James flipped the script and lasted a little, a little while longer. He kept doing this kind of stuff, you know. It, it, we come and everybody be crying. And then I remember I, went, we, I walked in the room, his eyes was closed and, and he was breathing hard and he opened his eyes and saw me and he bucked them. Like, what are you doing here? And I said, hey, Jim. And he just he always said to me, this was, I found it strange because if he saw me and he talked to me, he always said, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to do that. I'm just a few, I'm four, few, few years older to five years older than, but he respected me and would always, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, 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 and so, can I just tell you what, 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 Paul says, he says here, that these are the last words of encouragement from Paul to Timothy. These final three verses function as a conclusion to the exhortation just given. Timothy was commanded in the most solemn of ways to preach the word in response to the fact that many will no longer have an appetite for the wholesome and life-giving word. And, and, and Paul wants... Tim to understand that you have to get ready. Jim had, Jim had something on his life that was God-inspired. 
And I told him that. I said, what is God? I asked him, I said, what is God trying to tell you? And he would laugh it off. He was he would say, oh, nothing, nothing. But 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 God had his hands on him. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. And Paul is saying to, to Timothy that I'm about to depart. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get up out of here, that I, I can't stay here any longer. Every once in a while, my brothers and sisters, you got to move from where you are to a better place. I say this often in, in funerals that, that, that most of us here, our bodies don't operate like they used to operate. Help me somebody. You're not young as you used to be. You can't think as quick as you used to think. Some of y'all can't run like you used to run. Some of y'all barely make it up the stairs in your house because your body is not what it used to be. And it seems like anything in this world is gonna get old, it's gonna deteriorate, it's, it's not gonna work like it used to work. But, and then we decide that it's time to move. Jim knew it was time to move, and he says, I'm moving to another building. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm moving, and, and, and it was like Paul that says, my drink offering has been poured out that, yes, that, 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 that the time of my departure has come I, and I'm ready, I'm ready to meet the Lord. I'm, I'm ready to get my reward. I'm ready to hear God say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. I wonder if there's anybody in here, are you ready? Are you ready? Jim is saying to us today that what you see here is not me, it's just the house that I lived in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did y'all hear me? Yes, that that, that, I, that I, I lived in, and uh, it's, 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 but, but, but the house is not in order no more. Come on. I remember he sent a picture to me one time, he was in the gym. I asked him, what are you doing in the gym? And, and he says, I'm working out, working out, working out, working out. But you know what? I don't care how much working out you do, that there comes a time in your life where you got to move on. You got to move on. And he says to, to, to Timothy that I'm gone, but can I leave y'all a message? Be faithful. Hold on. Keep your hands in God's hands. Is there anybody here today that, that can get that message? They keep your hands in God's hands. And he says to Timothy, I'm going to close this thing. He says, look, y'all, I, can I tell y'all something? That, that this has not been aimless. It's not has been useless. It, 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 but, but he says, I have fought a good fight. Y'all yes, don't hear what I'm saying. Yes, Every time James went to the hospital, he was fighting a good fight. When, when things would stand in the way, when things decided to destroy his business, he said, I fought yes, a good fight. Yes, I wish I had some witnesses here. Is there anybody here know what it is to fight a good fight? I mean, are there any fighters in here that have fought and you had to weave and you had, I wish I had somebody here. You had to duck, but you fought on. And because you fought on, you got the victory. I tell you today, Jim's got the victory. I said, Jim's got the victory. Because he said, I fought a good fight. Yes, sir. I have finished the course. I've done all I could do. Y'all, what we need to understand is that God has passed for all of us, and when it's time, it's time. Jim could have lived longer, but he had already done everything God had given him to do. Y'all don't hear me today. He says, I have finished my course. I've finished the race, and, and I have kept the faith. I had faith when I was down. I had faith when my heart went. I had faith when my body got weak. I had faith. I wish I had somebody here. I wish I had somebody here. I had faith when everybody else had given up on me. But oh! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that I fought a good fight. This is for Jim, because he wouldn't let me do this. I fought a good fight, and I've kept the faith. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and he said, therefore, 
there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I don't know about anybody here, but one of these old days, one of these old days, I'm gonna hear the Lord say, Well done. Well done. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here want to hear the Lord say, Well done, thy good. I'm done. That's all right, preacher. You have fought the fight, you kept the faith, and now there's a reward for you, waiting for you in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah! Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come up a little higher. I'll make you ruler over many. We loved him, but God loved him more. God gave him rest. God gave him rest. Rest that nobody else could do. Thank you, Kim. Day in and day out at the hospital. He wouldn't let nobody else bathe him. All right. Wouldn't let nobody else do it. He would tell the staff at the hospital, my wife would be here. And you know what? She was right there. Yeah. Can we give her a hand today? My wife works at the medical school that's connected to the hospital. She would go by and she would call me and say, Kim is at the hospital. She said, Kim is here, Kim is here, Kim is here. Thank you, daughters, for loving your father because he loved y'all. And now this is your time to make him proud. Grandchildren, he loved y'all. Y'all should have brought the puppy. He loved y'all, but God loved him the most. God bless your hearts, Brother Williamson.